I, I always have a lot of trouble trying to explain to people what I do, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm hiring a van, I'm a blacksmith. When I was talking to my mother's friends, I was a sculptor. Uh, it, it depends on, on, on who I'm with, really. Uh, my, my, my father ran an engineering business. My grandfather set up before him. Um, Metalworking's always been in the blood, so I've always had this sort of mixture of engineering from my father and sort of artist, artistry side from my mother. Uh, and it sort of spoilt the mix of it, really. <laughs> One time I thought I was going to be a vicar, one time I thought I was going to be a farmer. I had absolutely no idea. I remember going on a school visit to a blacksmith's workshop and just being bored rigid. I just, just, just wasn't interested at all. It was only when I went to art college, having failed all my A-levels, that I, I sort of started playing around on the foundation course with bits of metal and something suddenly sort of seemed to, to click. It was obviously, yeah, I think it was in the blood and I, I sort of had a sort of a affinity with the material. And re really, I didn't ever look back from there on very. I left college, Wolverhampton Polytechnic, where I was making uh, steel automata, mechanical sculptures, turn a handle, thing, things move. And gradually over the years, over the last 30 years, I've sort of become a public artist, really, making decorative ironwork for public buildings and or sculptures for, for high streets. I sort of don't think I do have a style particularly, but, but I know I, I, I do from what other people tell me. I had some people last week who stayed with us happened to go into Brighton Museum and saw one of the pieces I've got there hanging from the ceiling and knew it straight away that it was one of mine. And it always surprises me because, because I just think I'm just responding to my influences, be it cartoonists or, or, or other metal workers. And, and I, I don't think of myself as having a particular style. Or at least if it is a style, it's a sort of very common one that's, that everybody's got, that there's nothing special particularly. The, the, the train is probably my favourite piece, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, a real joy to work on. It just fitted in the workshop from end to end, wall to wall, without the chimney on. I had to do the chimney separately. Uh, then it all, all dismantled and, and went off to be powder coated. Uh, but but the fact that it is contextualised on the old cast iron bridge as well. I, it, yeah, yeah, that, that that does feel sculptural as, as, well, as well as a fabrication process. And nobody can criticise me particularly because it's, it's, the, it's what the train looked like, you know, that's it. I, I was involved with two other artists on, on coming up with ideas that, that were possible within that sort of area that they were developing. And I, I, because I have a sort of love for old things, transport and trains and cars and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I saw the old cast iron disused railway bridge and thought, actually, I would love to do an image of the train that would have once passed across that bridge. You know, the way I brought the old Victorian engraving to life full scale. Uh, obviously with a lot of artistic license in, in sort of how it works from a health and safety and vandalism point of view, you know, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, yeah, the fact that, that, that it, it's, it, it's become a, a sculpture really because it's, as I say, contextualised with the bridge as well. They're sort of one and the same piece. It's reacting to its environment quite nicely. Yeah, yeah the, the worst thing about public art, is, for me, is the uh, anger that it engenders in people. I've been spat at and thumped when installing works in public. People don't want things in there, what they perceive as, as their space. Sometimes you get really nice nice comments. In fact, probably more often, but, but it's always the, the bad ones that you remember. It's like exhibiting in, in exhibitions. You know, I can have reams and reams of lovely comments in the comments book but it's just the one nasty comment that, that I remember for the rest of my life. John Mills' work is trite and ill-conceived. <laughs> It 
This country used to make and fabricate lots of things. I've got great memories of my dad's and grandfather's factory in, in, the, in the black country in, near Birmingham. Uh, and and just, the, just all the engineering works that were going on in, at the time all around there. Yeah, so, so in, in a way I, I want to encourage, you know, we, we, this country still does a lot of making stuff but you just don't hear about it anymore but I, I'd like to encourage children to, to know that, there's, that this is still going on and it is still possible and there's a lot of enjoyment to be had from making something with your own hands and bringing it into the world. <laughs>